And good afternoon and welcome to College Soccer here today at Lewis University as the Flyers take on Kentucky Wesleyan. I'm Mark Vasco. Brett Myers is here as well. And Brett, the Flyers made it all the way to the Final Four a year ago. Might not be an easy test this year. They lost quite a bit from that team. They did, but don't necessarily call it a rebuilding year as opposed to a reloading year for uh, head coach Evan Feifels and the Flyers. They have 15 new players this season, and they should be poised to make a strong run at least. Well, five returning starters, one of them in the nets, and Sebastian Kirazal, certainly someone they can depend on. Yeah, you know, Kirazal averaging, you know, uh, almost two goals against average, but has settled down and been pretty strong in the nets uh, and has helped the Flyers only allow six goals this year. Well, matter of fact, he is the uh, freshman of the year returning in the GLVC. They also have a returning All-American on defense in Zach Bond. Absolutely. A defensive strong point for the uh, Lewis Flyers, but they're also pretty good on offense as well. Well, they lost a lot of offense from a year ago. They lost their three-time All-American in Nestor Hernandez, 37 goals in his career. He accounted for 70% of their offense from a year ago, but they've got a freshman actually who's come in and stepped up. They, You know, Christian Ramirez has stepped in pretty nicely, four goals already this season for the Flyers, and is looking to uh, be the first freshman to lead the Flyers in scoring in quite some time. Well, they also have Freddie Ibarra. He has three goals already, so they have some offense. Matter of fact, three different times this year, they've already scored at least three goals in a game, and even though they were in the final four last year, that only happened four times all last season. You know, it's it's a different set of circumstances this year for the Flyers, and they've outscored their opponents 23-6 to already this season. Of course, another nice thing to have in your back pocket is a head coach like Evan Feifels. Absolutely. 18 years at the helm, and he picked up his 250th win here at Lewis University back Back on September 10th when they defeated Maryville 6 nothing. And so Evan knows all about getting victories on this soccer field. See if they can get another one here today. They've won three in a row, trying for number four. It's Lewis University and Kentucky Wesleyan. That's up next. I think the, the great opportunity that you have here at Lewis is that we have a, a great uh, liberal arts education offering for the for the student athlete in a beautiful campus setting and I think our average class size is around 12 uh, students to classrooms so I think professors and then uh, the coaching staff is uh, looking out for their entire welfare and kind of just um, getting ready for the real world after four years and that's how we kind of handle our relationship with the guys. His bold blue sound made him a guitar god. Now see why in this rockin' collection of his best performances. Catch Stevie Ray Vaughan live. Tonight at 10.30 on Lakeshore Public Television. Recently, Lewis University announced a historic $30 million campaign touching hearts and minds to fund a proposed addition to the Lewis Science Center where students are making new discoveries every day. For the first time, I enjoyed the environment, teachers, students. It makes you feel really comfortable. Jose's that rare guy who combines intelligence and determination and drive. Be a part of the Touching Hearts and Minds campaign. White & Company is one of the leading design and construction firms in the Midwest and a proud sponsor of Lewis University Athletics. White has 70 years experience in delivering integrated, client-driven services and award-winning projects. With a focus on sustainable design, White & Company helps clients create innovative and environmentally sound buildings and campuses for today and the future. Your vision is our inspiration. Let White & Company help you realize your goals. Field Flyers and the Panthers here this afternoon. Lewis trying to win their fourth in a row on Friday. Big win for them, Brett. They beat the 23rd ranked team in the country, Bellarmine. And they did so in exciting fashion. Didn't necessarily make it easy on themselves, but they got it done. No, they didn't. I mean, a little, a couple of defensive lapses actually giving up 13 corner kicks in that match, one of which at least uh, Bellarmine converted on, but they still got the victory, and that's all that really matters. But if you give up 13 corner kicks every time out, you're asking for trouble. Can't do that today as... Looking at the goalkeeper, Sebastian Carrizal, again, the GLVC freshman of the year last year, second in the nation in save percentage a year ago. See what he does here today. He was very busy on Friday, that's for sure. There are the starting lineups. You see Carrizal number one at J.E. Barr. It's actually Jose, but he likes to be called Freddy, so we'll call number nine Freddy E. Barr throughout the course of this game here today. 
Barros, number 20, he has the, uh, the foot on the ball quite often. We'll see him try to set up 17 to she is quite a bit here today as Lewis gets things going here in the red. The visiting Panthers in the white here today on a very windy day. It is chilly, temperature around 60 degrees and a very brisk north wind. So Lewis going into that wind here to get things started here this afternoon. Taking their time to set up their first possession really of the day. That's Gresh coming to get it there, number 13. That's Deshia, 17. And try to get Ramirez, their leading scorer. And now the Panthers. Nice job by Gresh. Midfield play is going to be awfully important. Whoever can control the midfield, especially in the early stages of this game, is going to pretty much have the upper hand in this match. Kara Savage on the far side. Looks for McGowan as it's kicked away for a throw in for Lewis U. Getting back to what I said about the midfield, I mean, everything in soccer kind of goes through the midfield. You can't set up uh, Ramirez or Nabara if you can't have the consistent midfield play, and that's what Lewis is looking to do here in the early stages of this match. And the throw in from McGowan. Again, Flyers, the, you know, the favorite today. You're talking about a Panther team that's winless in conference so far, just two and six overall, and you would like to get an early goal just to definitely assert your dominance here today if you can. Um, well, a little centering play there as Ramirez will kick that one far, and nice to get the ball already in the box this early, but that one kicked wide. Now well, Lewis off to a good start. They already got their first corner kick of the match, but that was a nice ball looking for the far post over there for Ramirez, and uh, Ramirez only had defenders in his way. If he wouldn't have, he might have had a more open shot on goal. Barros here under Deshias. will come into the box with it, the cross, but they could not get that one. As the keeper had to come over and make the stop. I like Deshias. He's a... Uh, a playmaker, so to speak. I mean, at 5'7", 147, he's 147 pounds. He's quick, he's got a lot of speed, and can make a lot of things happen for the Flyers in midfield. John will track that one down. It's nice to see the sun peeking out. It was completely overcast when we got here a little while ago, but the sun now is trying to come through. I tell you what, though, this wind uh, mark is going to be a hard, hard thing for both teams to contend with today. You know, any gust of wind will catch the ball and put it shit in the direction you probably don't want it to go. You can see the wind to hold that one up. Middle of the field, the Shea's had it taken away. Barros comes to get it, though, to the far side, McGowan. And ridden off, good challenge there by Kentucky Wesleyan. Time of possession going to be key, and so far the Flyers have done a great job with that here in the early going. That's Baia with it. To Shea's, off of Baia. It was actually a handball. It kind of came off his arm as the as Deshias was trying to pass it to him. Kind of had the misfortune of hitting on the side of his arm. In any event, that's a handball and a free kick for uh, the Panthers. So they'll let it go. Ryan Samuels, their keeper. He's got the breeze to help with that one, but Baia gets the head to it. Gets by Christian Ramirez. Then Gresh will head it up in the air. It's your All-American Zach Bond with that last header. And then finally this one will roll over the line. And Lewis will have the goal kick. Good strong play from the back line. I know Evan Feifels before the game, you and I both noticed this. He was screaming at his players, don't give up any corner kicks. <laughs> you know, after you give up 13 in the match on Friday, you know, Feifels, he's been around quite a bit, 18 years. He's going to yell at his team, like, can't make those mistakes if we're going to have any shot of winning this ballgame. Into the breeze, and boy, again, just knocked down in a hurry there. Very good header, though, by Kyra Savage. Or the near side, Jose Barra. The back Ramirez is again. Four goals already for the freshman, number three. Long lead for Deshias. So he'll play it into the box. He tries to go by his defender and does. We try to get it to Barros, but knocked away by the defense. I tell you what, though, that was a nice through ball from uh, Gresh to Deshias there to try to set that one up. Now it's Ibarra. Nice job. Now I'll switch sides, and Karasevich. 
Launch one into the box for Ibarra. Oh, the save is made. Didn't quite get a whole lot in at that time. Nice run by Ibarra there to get into the box, but that was actually kind of set up towards the midfield a little bit. Flyers, especially on a field of this width, you got to use all of the width, and the Flyers are actually doing that very nicely, and that might actually wear down the uh, Kentucky Wesleyan midfield in defense early on in this match. Ramirez here. Comes middle to Barros. Barros from Brazil. There's so many players on the Lewis roster right from the Chicagoland area, and then all of a sudden you look down and you see Brazil on your roster. Yeah, I was actually talking to him. He actually came up. He's a very nice guy. Uh, introduced himself to me before the game and is actually wondering if this game is going to be broadcast online, which it is, so his family can watch back home in Brazil. Gresh had that one knocked away. But it will be a throw-in for the Flyers here on the near side. No score early on. A throw-in. Deshias had that one roll through. Flyers kind of setting up a methodical pace, though. I mean, that's a good way to start kind of slow and easy and, you know, get your offense set and uh, don't have to do too much with it. Just have to be efficient enough to uh, get the ball through and get some shots on goal. Baia goes to the far side. That one taken away. And finally, Karasevich. McGowan challenging there. And it will go off McGowan. Looks like it'll be a Panther throw in. Nope, it's going to be flyer possession after all on that far side. McGowan got a good deflection there off uh, the player marking him. Good job. Barros, great job to get by. The cross headed down by Ramirez. And then it's Gresh, and it will go just wide. Ah, Gresh comes up firing right there, but. You know, once again, good play, especially using the width of the field and using the line to the advantage and kind of trickled through and Gresh had a perfect opportunity, just pushed it wide. But again, on, on Friday in that win over Bellarmine, Carazal had to make a ton of saves and some were just outstanding highlight reel saves. And it would be nice to give him a day where he didn't have to work quite as hard here no, today. No, and, and you know what? That's exactly it, too. The the way the Flyers have come out in this match so far, it, it looks like they've had a really tough game like they did against Bellarmine on Friday. And they're coming out, and they have a little momentum on their side because of that. I had to make them feel good to beat Bellarmine. With so many newcomers, as we talked about in the pregame, still trying to feel, feel themselves out a little bit. Now they're starting to feel some confidence, you can tell. Well, it looks pretty fluid here in the early going. To Sheas, only cross knocked away, and looks like that'll be a corner. And I say again about, about the Sheas, he's, you know, he's the creator. He's the one who's going to make things happen today for the Flyers on the offensive side. Everything seems to be going through him in this early stages of the match. You can see that flag by Barros there in the corner, and even the uniform jerseys flapping in that breeze that they're going to have to battle with all day. Brings it in, and you now Freddie. Couldn't get it, and then DeShias launches it way up and over. Well, you can't shoot, or you can't score if you don't shoot, and <laughs> DeShias had the perfect volley opportunity with the left foot there. Just bent it a little too much. So Ryan Samuels again with their goal kick. And the other thing about the shot by Gresh in, uh, earlier on and the shot by DeShias there, that's a hard thing to do, especially since the Flyers are going into the win this first half. Barros will take it away. Deshius is in the middle. He'll get the feet if he can. Beat his defender to the box, but nope. Kicked away, and we'll get the throw in here on the near side. I think Lewis is figuring out here early on the better chances they have. They've got to keep the ball on the ground. I mean, putting the ball in the air is great, but you know, if you keep it on the ground, especially with the wind in your face, you have better shots and goal. Ramirez with the cross. Ooh, Deshius couldn't quite get there, but we still have possession. McGowan. And oh, the save, McGowan. A one-time shot there by McGowan had a little bit of space to work with and made the most of it, but uh, Samuel's kind of getting in the way of that one. Good save, though, by the uh, Panthers goalkeeper. You gotta like the pressure the Flyers are putting on here in the early going. It's a lot. Watch that one roll on out. It's caught in the breeze. And you can watch the clock here. And of course, on the college level, the clock counts down as opposed to up. World Cup soccer and so on. And they actually do stop the clock here on the college level as well for injuries, so there's no extra time, those kind of things. And 
hopefully we won't have to worry about any overtime. <laughs> no, no overtime, no extra time, nothing like that. Hopefully it's a clear-cut Flyers victory today. Of course, they got to the Final Four a year ago and lost in the national semifinals on penalty kicks. What a tough way to go down. When not a, so close to a chance to play for the title. I say not a good way. I've seen many a penalty kick shootout, and it's never a good way to decide a, a soccer match. There was so much riding on it. McGowan tried the cross. It was knocked away, and we'll get it on the throw in on the touchline there. Yeah, but once again, the Flyers applying the pressure, especially in the offensive third in the field. Only a matter of time before they find the back and then it when they wear uh, the Panthers defense down. And trying to track it down as Kochu on the far side, number five for the Flyers. He'll just kick it away. And it looks like already the Flyers have uh, Kentucky Wesleyan back on their heels a little bit on the transition there. The, the Panthers only had two players go forward. They, that means they had nine players in their defensive half of the midfield stripe, which is not a good place to be. <laughs> you can't score that way. Well, see so if Zach Bond, number 14, can make the challenge. They do get by him, but then Coach is there to clean it up and they'll kick it away. Or the Panther throw in. Yeah, with the ball rolling out like this gives the uh, Flyers a perfect opportunity to set up that back line. And it looks like Ramirez actually heading all the way back. He's a scorer, but he, he's looking like he's playing in the back four for the Flyers right now. Throw in in the far corner. Nice job by Ibarra there. And they're going to call the foul. Just a little tug of the shirt, that's all, you know, a little push in the back, that's all you need to get a whistle sometimes, depending on the uh, official. And that one. Come back. As the Panthers trying to get something set up here offensively for them, but oh, great job to come from behind. And Freddie knocks it away to give it back to the Flyers. Uh, that's a great tackle, just coming out of nowhere, just puts the foot in and knocks the ball away. I don't think the Kentucky Wesleyan player saw that one coming. This will be an easy one. Carazal will clean this one up. They go far side. Back into the box. Baia. Try to get it to DeShias, but maybe another corner kick. That was a nice through ball, though, to Baia. Baia making a great run on the right side. Just couldn't finesse the ball enough to DeShias to get a shot on. Corner kick nevertheless, though. By a good size, 6'1", about 190. It's tough to knock off the ball, that's for sure. The thing about the Flyers I'm noticing is that they've got a nice little balance of uh, speed and size. It helps them out quite a bit. There's Koresh. You know, too much traffic there to try to get it through. But here on the near side will be Christian Ramirez. Again, leading scores, just a freshman. Baia tried to find Barros, now finally does. Oh, good feed into the box, but DeShias just couldn't quite get there. And not only that, but Barros kind of put that one a little too far in front of DeShias, and DeShias knew he couldn't catch up to the ball before it got into the Samuel's hands. Nice job again by Baia to stop that offensive run by the Panthers before it really even starts. And McGowan to DeShias. Goes by his man. Keeps the run alive. The cross into the box. Ramirez. Ibarra. Back up for Baia. It'll be over the net. Once again, the Flyers setting up the offense. And, and DeShias so, showing some excellent patience there just waiting for his teammates to get forward you know, he had four or five guys any one of which he could have chosen as they made runs into the box challenge there goes over the touchline and the Lewis throw in Kara Savage Barr goes by his man and 
He'll blow the whistle. Well, if you can't tackle him, foul him. <laughs> uh, I guess pack of flyers, the, uh, the strategy of Kentucky Wesleyan is taking at this point, but kind of a dangerous area, especially uh, as, as much pressure as the flyers put on now. You know, free kick about 35 yards from goal. It's one of those where you can either take a shot, hope for a rebound off the Samuels, or, you know, kind of chip it in and hope that maybe the Sheas or uh, Ibarra or Ramirez can get a foot on it and put it in the back of the net. So Gresh will launch one in. He tried to get the header to Ramirez, and it just sort of bounced over everybody. Nice chip. I, I like that idea, though. I mean, Gresh saw that he had a few options there and kind of chipped it to the guy he thought most likely would put it in the back of the net, and Ramirez just didn't work out so well. Rolls out for a flyer throw in. They'll bring it back in in a hurry. And McGowan. I'll let it go. No score here. First half of play. Well, if you're the Panthers, you know you're the underdog. You just want to hang around, and they're doing that so far, despite the fact that the Flyers have basically dominated play, haven't tallied yet. Yeah, but the way the Flyers have made some runs and have put the pressure on, you know, more, more than likely here in the next few minutes, uh, Kentucky Wesleyan's going to be back on their heels a little bit. They might start to get a little winded. And, you know, it's, not, it's 90 minutes, but, uh, you know, a good team will do that. They'll put the offensive pressure on, put the defense back on their heels, wear them down, and make it easy pickings. Headed down by Ibarra. And this one over everything. And the goal kick for Lewis. I like that idea, though, by Kentucky Wesleyan. I mean, if you can't get any pressure towards the goal, you know, try to chip it in, see if you can get one past Carousel. But that's not a little, not easy to do. He stands six foot four. It's not easy to get anything really past him, especially if it's straight on. I doubt about that. Getting into the wind here with the goal kick. He keeps it low, but it will roll out. Again, three wins in a row for Lewis. Back on the 17th, they beat Southern Indiana 3-1, knocked off Missouri-St. Louis 4-2, and that 2-1 win over 23rd-ranked Bellarmine on Friday we talked about. Trying to make it four straight. Now, this team used to winning the last three seasons, plus the beginning of this season, 54, 7, and 7 for the Flyers coming into today. That That's very, very impressive. And it, you know, it shows also, you know, the, the, the talent that they bring in, and not only that, but the fact that you have a coach that stuck around for 18 seasons and, you know, brings in the talent year in, year out. And that's why that kind of keys to Lewis' success over the last few seasons. Which shows why that final four from a year ago was not an accident. No, not at all. Just heartbreaking they couldn't make it to the championship game having to lose in penalty kicks like they did. Barros. Gresh was there, but kicked away from him. But I guess it was off of Gresh, so Panthers will have the throw in here near midfield. It's always a really tough call for an official on the on the sidelines, especially when their view is kind of obstructed to see which uh, player the ball came off last. So most of the time it's a guessing game. Well, Deshias, here's the race. He'll take it himself. He beat his man. Try to use the right foot from the left side and hits the side of the net. Deshias could have done much better with that. And let's take a look at the replay there. I mean, it was a great run. He beat his man, but he tried to poke it towards the near post, and he probably could have done better using the right foot and kind of bending it off the front of the toe as opposed to hitting it straight on. He had a lot of open space to work with, and he, I don't think he, he just had a whole full head of steam. Tunnel vision didn't see the open spot to the far post. But another great opportunity for the Flyers. See if they can get another one going here. I think that was a handball, so it'll be. It was. She has kind of reached up, kind of had to come off the arm a little bit. Nice job by Karasevich to step in front, take it away. The far side. Good run for him. Runs through traffic, gets knocked down, and they are going to call that foul. It is a foul. Obstruction, actually, is the call. Kind of got in the way of the progress of the uh, Lewis attacker right there, did uh, Kentucky Wesleyan. Good call. Karasevich. And we'll feel that one for a while. Karasevich made a nice run there. 
just had a drew the double team, so to speak, and kind of got in the way. That's where the obstruction comes in. So we'll look at that one again. And he kept it going, but the defenders converged on him, and there was all sorts of traffic, and down he went. Oh, yeah, and Karasevich almost got an elbow there as we looked at the replay. So here comes the free kick. And it's an indirect free kick, so after the obstruction call, which means that he can't go directly into the goal, it has to touch another Flyers player before it can you know, go in the back of the net. So looks like the Flyers are actually kind of setting up a play here as the referee sets up the wall and makes sure the players are 10 yards back on this free kick. I think what's going to happen here is Gresh is going to poke it to his teammate and then maybe a shot will be taken from there. Yeah, Ramirez. When who touched it first to Grash, who puts it on net, but the save is made. I like that play, though. I mean, you have three players running over the ball, and then you just kind of poke it to Gresh, who's making a run towards the middle, and Gresh has an open opportunity and goal as everybody's going to the far side of the field. Gresh tries to get it to Deshias. Can he win the race? I'm just kicked away by the defense. Not a bad idea. She has kind of let up a little bit. If he, I think he would have had a chance if he would have run through, but he just kind of let up on his uh, defender a little bit. The cross. Gresh finds McGowan, who had the net there, but misses it wide. Ah, oh, mistimed on the, on the attempt there. McGowan had an opportunity to poke it to the, to the near post, but uh, kind of had it go off the side of his foot a little bit. Coach Feifel's there watching his team again dominate play, as we've said early on, certainly dominate time of possession, just haven't tallied yet. However, Lewis is getting a little more creative with the ball as this half goes on. Well, Deshias, another race for him. Well, and he leaned in with the shoulder to get the contact, and that's what they're going to call the foul on. Try to get around his defender a little bit, and a little too much contact, says the referee. He'll be going the other way. Now, in the English Premier League, that's not a foul, but no. here it's a, in the GLVC, those kind say, of contacts it, it, are fouls. In, in high school and in college, that kind of contact is as minimal as it is, it's still a foul. The higher levels, you know, MLS, English Premier League, all of those, not so much. That one headed out. That one launched into the box, but plenty of defense there. Coach, you're the one who will take it out. And bring it to Ramirez. Well, that one miss hit and goes out. Kentucky Wesleyan, though, trying to catch Lewis off guard there. Trying to get a little transition, but Lewis defense goes back really quick. It shows the speed of the Flyers. It's Daniel Ballard to throw it in. Launches it into the box. Headed out by Gresh. Can they keep it in? Up Ramirez will take it away. Try to get it to Deshias, but. A nice sliding tackle there to knock it out by Jamie McGregor. You know, talk about Ramirez leading the team in scoring with four goals this year, but uh, what you don't notice about him is the fact that he's playing on the back line right now. He can do it on both ends of the field. Well, Zach Bond, a rare misplay for him, but they say innocent contact, and they play on, and Flyers get it back. Far side. Kara Savage. That's Bea. Bea back middle to Ibarra. Slices it through to Barros. Good back tap. And eventually to Sheas. And cross that one in, but it's headed out. But Bea puts it right back in and then headed by Ramirez, but the save is made. If Ramirez would have timed that jump just a little bit better. That was a great ball there by Bea. Well, let's take a look at it once more. Again, he got in there. That might have been over the net, but just in case, keeper makes the save. Good sense of direction, though, by Ramirez, and that's why he leads the team in goals with four. He can create chances like that. So the Panthers. And forward, but taken right away again. Ramirez looking for Barros. Goes far side. Coming down. McGregor. And run off on the far side. And 
McGowan fights for it there, goes out. Going to be a substitution, our first one of the day. And Kentucky Wesleyan will bring in Jordan Sash, a freshman. And they'll bring out 23, Sam DeVore. And they get the throw in. That went up for grabs. Gresh will get it. Down to Ramirez. Good chance again. They'll go all the way towards the net. Well, it's finally kicked out, and we'll have a corner kick. I don't know what Ramirez was thinking there. He's, it was a half shot, half pass. <laughs> He's kind of floating up, hoping and praying something good would happen. Either wind would kind of catch it and blow it in the net or have a defender or have an attacker on the far post put it in the back. I was thinking the same thing. Is that going to be a shot or a pass? It's kind of neither. Off the corner, it's Barros. Comes into the box with it. And that one. <laughs> It's a hard shot, shot for Barros to take, trying to, you know, work it around traffic. He had two or three Kentucky Wesleyan defenders around him and tried to make something out of nothing there. It just didn't work out so well. Didn't get much power behind that one. And we'll get the corner kick, or I see the goal kick. As we're down inside 19 minutes for a scoreless first half. That's an easy takeaway. And Desheas, chance now. You know, pretty good starting tackle there to knock it away for the Panthers. Matter of fact, they're even going to get possession out of him. She is, though, after uh, missing that shot earlier on, he's looked a little more tentative on the attack, which, you know, you can't let plays like that get to your head. She is as talented and speedy enough where he can get around this Kentucky Wesleyan defense. Be a flyer throw in here on the near side. Ramirez. Down to Deshias. And find Ibarra. Karasevich, he'll play it into the box. Oh, Ramirez whiffed at it. And can he save it in the corner? Yes, he can. It's by his man nicely. The cross right there. Barros, oh, he hit the post. And then kicked away. It wasn't for lack of effort, let me tell you. I mean, Barros had the near post right in his his grass there, and it just pushed it off the post. Well, he was right there. Launched it, and it just was deflected away. Flyers again. That's just bad luck right yeah, there. Yeah, kidding. Karasevich now with it. Far side, that's McGowan. He'll play it up, and that one again <laughs> by Barros just goes wide. They are knocking on the doorstep, though, Mark. I mean, Barros has had a couple of chances in the last 30 seconds, and if it weren't for, you know, a bad angle on that shot and the shot before hitting the post, we'd have at least a one nothing score right now. Well, but the Flyers knocking on the doorstep. They're creating the chances. They're slowly working their way, and they're making Kentucky Wesley. And think about it right now. It, it's, it's all in their heads right now that this team is going to score. The Lewis Flyers are going to score at any point if they just have a nice little bounce go their way. If they keep putting the pressure on like they have been, sooner or later they'll have to break through. There are no strangers to scoring more than three goals in a contest. It's happened five of the first seven games this year. Ramirez. Finds Gresh. Well challenged there, but then Bea. And Kara Savage. On the far side. That's McGowan. And some traffic. Gets by all of that traffic to go into the box with it before it's finally kicked away. And that went all the way out. All the way back near midfield. Again, gets up in that breeze. That's that north wind that blew it all the way back to the middle of the field. The Flyers doing well. They've had the wind at their back this whole entire first half, but they're doing well despite that. Deshias fights through that defender. Into the box again for Ibarra to Ramirez. Oh, and then finally cleaned up Deshias. Ah, uh, she is pouncing on the rebound right there. I, I mean, Ramirez could have probably done better with that, but he still got he still got the rebound off of Samuels, and she has just had to clean it up on the far post. 
Boy, chance after chance, and finally it all pays off. And, I mean, Ramirez could have finished that with that shot right there. Nice job by Samuels to get the tip, but you're going to give it the rebound. And with a player as quick as DeShias, DeShias has, you know, has every opportunity to finish, and he did. Well, there's only so much their keeper, Samuels, can do with that one. He made a great Who's diving save, but eventually, that, you know, there's only so many saves you can make. Oh, yeah. Christian Ramirez. And Samuels, he's had the lion's share of the work this year for Kentucky Wesley, and he's got five starts on the year, and uh, goals against average is almost three. And right there, I mean, he did all he could with that one, but when it's off the fingertips like that, you're going to give up a rebound. So again, we'll take a look at it one more time. Great save there by Samuels. Sprawling out and getting that with the left hand, but, you know, like I said, there's only so much you can do when it comes off the fingertips, and especially when you got a speedy player like DeShias closing in on the far post. A great job by DeShias, just again, just go towards the net. It's the same as hockey, you know, just go towards the net, put it on net and go towards the net. And maybe get a clean up there. So one nothing Flyers. Just over 14 minutes to go, or actually now just about 14 minutes to go in this first half. So in essence, what you're saying, Mark, garbage goal for the Flyers, but it still counts the same. Absolutely right. And they earned it with all the pressure they had put on. They had definitely earned it. Well, they had a few minutes there where they had had, uh, had plenty of chances that the ball just didn't bounce their way. Well, the ball finally bounced their way. And the one nothing tally shows the end result. So third goal of the year for DeShias. Ramirez picked up the assist. Ramirez with four goals, four assists now on the year. So give him 12 points to lead the team. That's impressive, especially for a freshman. Bea, she is here again on the near side. Ramirez trying to fight through. Gresh will help out. Gets it through to Ramirez. Now McGowan. Ibarra. Now Bea chips it up. For Ibarra, if he can get there, no, the keeper gets there first. And the long kick. Zach Bond will get that one to Carazal to make sure there's no trouble. Carazal said a very easy day today. He hasn't been challenged a whole lot. And like I had mentioned before, as hard as he had to work on Friday, he deserves an easier one if he can get one. Off. Substitution. And Lewis will bring in Armin Ribak, and that means Sheas will get a well-earned rest. He's been all over the place in the first half. The only goal for the Flyers here in the game, but uh, no letdown here for the Flyers. Armin Ribak, he, uh, I saw him play in high school, actually, at McChesney Park Harlem High School, and has the ability to find the back of the net. So uh, no letdown for Evan Feifels in the uh, Lewis Flyers with uh, Ribak coming in the game. Call the foul there with a kick. And Matter of fact, Bea going to feel that one for a while after getting it in the thigh. Try to walk that one off. one nothing Flyers here and trying to win their fourth in a row. And those balls hurt a lot more, especially as the, the air is colder. And it's going to hurt a lot more as the season drags on, as the temperatures become consistently colder. No question about that. Gresh. It slices through into the box after all, but then right back out. Yeah, Karasevich. Just go backwards to set it up to Bond. An All-American goes to the far side, Kochu. Now it's Gresh. McGowan. And had it knocked away from him. Drury and Quincy enter today, number Tied for first in the GLVC, they're both at four and one. Northern Kentucky, three zero and two, and then Lewis and Indianapolis, both at four and two in the league, entering today. Still up for grabs. Where is Savage? We'll go back to Ibarra, and he'll launch one that goes over the net. 
Flyers not afraid to take the shots there as Ibarra just lets that one fly off the right foot. And that's the thing I noticed. I mean, the Great Lakes Valley Conference, it's pretty stacked from top to bottom, and it's going to be a very important road swing for the Flyers here after this uh, home matchup. They've got games against two of the three teams that are above them in the standings in Indianapolis and Northern Kentucky on the first and the third respectively. So they get this one out of the way. They got a couple of important contests coming up. That's Ibarra. Well, when they lost to Drury early in the year, ranked number nine in the nation. So there's a whole bunch of nationally ranked teams in our league, as always, really. I was looking from top to bottom as I was going over the game. You know, this is pretty loaded in, in terms of uh, you know, talent and good teams. Ramirez tried for the cross, but knocked out. It'll be a throw in. McGregor from the Panthers, though, throwing his body in harm's way. That ball could have landed anywhere and hurt him, but uh, it's a sign of good soccer players. Not afraid to throw his body in and uh, take a couple of bruises in the process. Barros gets knocked down from behind and no foul call. And coach you with it now. McGowan finds Barros. A nice play. And Barros down on the ground once again. Barros who had it knocked away, but still stayed alive here for the Flyers and Ramirez. And again, the defense continuing to work hard for the Panthers. But they cannot save that one once again via flyer throw in. Talking about the conference play, Bellerman today is at Wisconsin Parkside. They've got no score in that one. The first half there. Bea, nice job to take it away. Create more offense. Another chance here for Lewis. To Ibarra takes it into the box from the left foot, had it deflected. Then Barros has his shot deflected and out. Couple of deflections, a couple of misdirections there. And anything and everything can happen. Here come the Flyers on the attack again. Fifth corner kicker ready of the match for the Flyers, and they have not allowed one. So uh, Evan Feifels, they're listening to what they're, he's preaching right now. So say we might have our turn with 13 corner kicks today. Well on our way, it looks like. Here is Savage. We'll play it into the box. Barros. Well, he's lost that battle. The much taller goalkeeper who snares it away. Well, the way the Flyers have been attacking Kentucky Wesleyan's back line, it wouldn't surprise me if they hit 13 corner kicks in this match. A high pop up that Bayo will head down. And the battle here on the near side as it rolls out. Which way is it going to go? It's going to go to the Flyers for the throw in. Just about seven minutes remaining and a half that has belonged all to Lewis, but just a one goal lead. I'd like another before you go to the break. And really put your stamp on this one. Ramirez crosses it in to Barros. Ooh, had it deflect out. He just couldn't get all of it. Great ball into the 18, though, by Ramirez to Barros. And Barros just had a tough angle to try to volley that one in the back of the net and kind of came off his shin a little bit. Well, that would have been a highlight goal if he'd have done that. Absolutely. Nice idea, though. I like the way that Lewis kind of tr sets things up and creates things and using the space and using all of the 75, 80 yards and the width of the field to their advantage here. But awfully tough to get it out of midair like that and get it just the way you want it. Yes, but definitely an A for effort. No question. Barros. And Kochu will track it down for the Flyers. Well, taken away from him, a rare turnover, but an easy one there for Karasevich. Right here, right here. Forward, 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 forward. Now Ramirez. Well, that one kicked out. Panther throw in. Headed up. And Bond will head it back to Ibarra. 
kick it out of harm's way. And watch that one cross the touchline again. Tries to throw it in in a hurry to Ibarra. Go back and we coach you to set it up now. And the Flyers looking like they've got all the time in the world to set up exactly what they want to do to get more pressure on the uh, Kentucky Wesleyan goal. Couldn't quite get it through the Barros. And they'll take it away. That was number three for them, Saren Fairman. And here we go again with Bea. Feed it here. But then kicked away once again. I could not quite save that one. Another Lewis throw in. Karasevich has a lot of room here. But that one kicked to nowhere, and it'll be Panthers' possession. Karasevich would have been better off to play that ball towards the middle. He had uh, Ibarra definitely standing there. Instead, he tried to play it down the line, and no Flyers were making a run. And the official blows the whistle there. After Vreebach tried to make something happen. Vreebach trying to uh, restrain his defender as he was trying to get around the ball. And more often than that, that's going to be whistled a holding call. And it was, in fact, in this case. Bay of the one who made contact there. And Ramirez, can he come up with it? Yes, he can. And then he gets fouled there. To That's a really <laughs> bad foul there by Benke of the Kentucky Wesleyan Panthers. Yeah, that's a yellow. That's yeah, definitely a yellow card. He had made no attempt to play the ball. He must have scouted this game and knows that Ramirez is an offensive threat. Just stuck his leg out and tripped him. Good call by our official to give him the yellow card. No doubt about that one. Yeah, that's a blatant trip and a blatant yellow, really. It's a bad, bad foul. He didn't need to do that. So Reebok. Let's we'll see if we can see that again as we set up for the free kick. Yeah, no doubt. He just stuck his out. leg out. And if he would have had the, sh the, the studs turned up on the cleats there, that might have been a red card offense right there. Luckily, he just kind of stuck the front of the foot out as opposed to the bottom. Grash, the center. Kicked away, but Ibarra will track it down. He tries for a cross that's knocked out. It'll be a throw in. We'll do it in a hurry to Christian Ramirez. Play that one into the box, but headed out. Almost a handball, but Panthers come out of there with it anyway. But Zach Bond, the All-American there, will track that down. Actually, he'll just let his keeper come to get it. That was a great job and a great illustration there of why Zach Bond is an All-American defender. He doesn't do too much with it. He just shields the ball back to uh, the keeper, Curzal, and lets Curzal pick it up and handle the rest. Just cut your man off at the pass. Make sure he can't get there. That's the difference there between that and the yellow card by a Benke of the Panthers. <laughs> right. I mean, I mean, Bond, all he had to do was just contain, and that's what you know any good coach will tell a defender. All you've got to do is contain, contain, especially in a situation like this when you know you're playing a team that's a little bit better than you. All you got to do is contain. You don't have to do too much with it. And more often than not, you'll get a defensive stop. McGowan plays it in. Reebok the header. Kicked away. Before Ibarra can get to it. But then another great play by the Flyers and Karasevich. And it's all about soccer intelligence too, Mark. I mean, you know, knowing what your situation is and knowing what to do with the ball and not overthinking it, and that's what the Flyers are doing really well right now. Karasevich, the cross, it will go over everybody. Reebok will track it down though. And set up another chance. Flyers letting the play come to them instead of just making things happen, and that's exactly why they've dominated the first half. Rash gets it in. Ramirez. Like I say, they're not rushing things either. No, they're not at all. Like I said, they're letting the play come to them and just creating chances when they come available and they're not trying to force anything. Great attempt by Bea there, but eventually goes over, and that'll be another corner kick for the Flyers. And I think that's part of it. it has to do with uh, the coaching of Evan Feifels as well. I mean, 
you know, drilling that discipline into the minds of these Lewis players, and that's why they, you know, they come, they've come out and they've played so well here in this first half. They're not doing too much with the ball, and they're not trying to be flashy. They're only, you know, being as efficient, as effective as they need to be. Barros, that one kicked out. As we're in the you know, closing section, it's actually about 125 to go until half. And that one kicked out. Another flyer throw in. Fresh throws it down. Barros for the header. Now Ibarra. Now Bayer to keep it alive. Goes wide side. Now McGowan. Karasevich. Trying for the cross, but kicked away again. Down to 48 seconds. And we're already over halfway where we need to be for 13 corner kicks in this match. This is <laughs> Lewis's seventh. Barros. Oh, great job to get by the defender. And his cross knocked away for yet another corner. But they'll have to hurry, 29 seconds. Barros showing some great discipline there. I know you probably watched a few soccer matches where a player would take a dive in that situation. Barros just kind of ran through it. Yeah. Tried to get that one to Ibarra, but the keeper steps in front, intercepts it, and that should be about it. Just 13 seconds remain until halftime. But to say the least, a successful half for Lewis University. As they have kept their keeper, Carazel, bored back there in his own net for the most part. Yeah, but like you said, he needed a day off, and uh, the Flyers go into halftime with a 1 0 lead. So, does she is the lone goal so far as the Flyers have a 1 0 lead at the end of one half of play? We'll come back with much more, and we've got an interview and a lot of other things still to come at a halftime, but we're back after this. It's Lewis University Soccer on Lakeshore TV. Really fun when you come in um, cross country and track. It's not like some of the other sports where you're, you know, sitting on the bench or having to wait for your playing time. You get to come in and compete right away. Um, and with a lot of the young team we have, we got roster spots open on the, on the relays to be able to come in and run. Um, we're allowed to run, you know, up to six athletes per event at the conference level. So we always need a, an influx of, of any type of athlete. We're a solid program. We're good in the sprints. We're good in the jumps, hurdles, throws, distance. We try to be a well-rounded program. Um, so we, you know, we're just really trying to build every event. How do you design a new building for an ancient city? I don't know. I'm trying. That's the challenge for I.M. Pei when this master of modern architecture returns to China to build a major new museum in Suzhou, his very old hometown. This project is a biography for myself. It's I.M. Pei. My re return to home, so to speak. Building China Modern on American Masters. Tonight at 8 on Lakeshore Public Television. Next time on American Masters. What's so hot about Frank Gehry? He's the leading architect in the world today. I'd like to play with curved shapes. Meet Frank Gehry and behold his astonishing buildings. When it opened, I thought, my God, what have I done? Far out stuff. How does he do it? I call it a magic trick. Look into his sketches to find out. Sketches of Frank Gehry, directed by Sidney Pollack on American Masters. Tonight at 9 on Lakeshore Public Television. Lewis University, the only Division II school in the Chicagoland area. I'm a Lewis Flyer because of the competition, passion, and tradition. I'm a Lewis Flyer because of the academic and athletic balance. I am a Lewis Flyer because I'm pursuing my dream. And welcome back. With me now, Dan Allen, Vice President for Advancement here at Lewis University. And Dan, of course, this soccer game kicking off homecoming week and all sorts of festivities here on campus this week. Yeah, great weekend of uh, activities, especially for us in alumni relations. We're really happy to be able to honor distinguished alumnus and Joliet native Bob Pluth. Bob uh, is, a, is a really accomplished attorney in Chicago. We'll be presenting him with a Distinguished Alumni Award at, at a dinner on Saturday. Um, we, we have uh, a terrific event planned for Coach Gillespie, Gordy Gillespie, re-raising the three national championship banners that were earned while he was here as the baseball coach. Little known fact, uh, Gordy started here 
his college coaching career at Lewis, so be able to honor Gordy in those national championships. And then a, a wonderful luncheon plan for our families and, and our alumni. We'll have our parents of current students back to celebrate uh, homecoming with our alumni. So a terrific luncheon. Well, the thing about Gordy, if people don't know, I mean, he is literally the winningest baseball coach at any level in the entire country, and it all started here at Lewis University. That's right, and he's been featured on uh, conference agendas with some of the greatest baseball players of all time, uh, Mickey Mantle and uh, you know, others, uh, others in, in that category have presented alongside Gordy, and I've been told that uh, Gordy was certainly the most knowledgeable. Well, and not only, you know, does the school have been known for athletics, but certainly academics as well. There was, uh, you know, the latest power rankings just came out here a couple of days ago when we're ranked 18th in the nation in all of Division II in the poll that combines academics and athletics, and we're talking out of hundreds. That's pretty amazing. That's right. Hundreds of Division II schools around the country, they ranked the top 100. Lewis was 18th in that ranking, and, and a real testament to our mission as a university to bring athletics and academics together. Credit to Dan Schumacher, athletic director, and his leadership in working with the, the Lewis faculty and our provost, Dr. Stephanie Schlachter, to continue to, to reinforce that message that is so uh, crucial to Lewis that it's not just about athletics in our athletic department, but it's academics and athletics together. Well, another big uh, the story as far as academics is concerned, a brand new science building in the works. Uh, where do we stand on that? We're anticipating breaking ground on the science building in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, the executive committee of our board of trustees will vote uh, hopefully positively on a plan of finance and a construction timeline, and we should be breaking ground on that facility quite soon. And obviously that takes money, but you know, obviously you're doing a nice job. There's a lot of money being raised right now on campus. There is. Uh, despite the recession, our alumni, our, our parents, our friends, benefactors in the community have responded positively to this need. Um, we've raised just over $28 million towards a $30 million goal. The science building is about $18 million um, of that total, and we hope uh, by the end of our fiscal year we'll exceed $31 million raised. That's great. Dan Allen, thanks very much. And guess what? More soccer action coming up right after this. Our group is unique in that we have uh, players from around the world, not just here in the U.S. And again, I think that adds to uh, what we have here. Our kids are learning to deal with pe not only people from different states and stuff like that, but from different countries, different cultures. And uh, I believe we're learning how to get along with people with, with different ideas and, and, and from these different cultures. And again, I think that just makes them better in the long run after they graduate and, and move on from Lewis University. Three years ago, they were just 10 guys with normal day jobs and a video from their college years up on YouTube. Now, 10 million views later, Straight No Chaser has become an undeniable music sensation. The perfect mix of harmony and humor guarantee an entertaining evening for all. Join us for an intimate evening with the acapella phenomenon Straight No Chaser, live in New York. Today at 3.30 on Lakeshore Public Television. On Masterpiece Mystery. A uh, young lady has called her. It's about a murder she might have committed. Might have committed? You mean she does not know? Girls are like that. They've no sense, girls. I was there. I killed her. No one believes me. Hercule Poirot, the famous detective. Still got no bleeding idea who done it. <laughs> Third girl, Poirot, on Masterpiece Mystery. Monday at 7 on Lakeshore Public Television. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. And welcome back to the Lewis University soccer field here in Romeoville, the campus of Lewis U. It's halftime. Men's soccer, the Flyers on top of Kentucky Wesleyan 1-0. And I'm Mark Vasco along with Brett Myers. And, well, first half, it's only a one-goal lead, but it seems like it's all been, you know, Flyers and nothing else really. Well, as we take a look at the first half statistics, the number that stands out to me the most is the shots taken, and that's uh, 18 for the Flyers, and only one for Kentucky Wesleyan in that first half, and that kind of showed the dominance of 
Lewis in that first half right there. Also the uh, eight corner kicks to zero for uh, Kentucky Wesleyan and uh, pretty disciplined uh, Kentucky Wesleyan six fouls as opposed to uh, four for uh, the uh, Lewis Flyers in that first half. All in all, a dominating first half performance by the Lewis Flyers. And again, like the fact that Sebastian Carazel, the only, you know, that's zero saves he had to make in that first zero. half. Zero. Yeah, he, he's been, he, he got that day off that he needed after that uh, game on Friday against Bellarmine. We talked about Christian Ramirez being the leading scorer coming in with the four goals. It's just a freshman. He has three shots already in this first half. Two of them were on net. And, he did assist on the lone goal, so he's been a very busy man. He has. I mean, that's that's the type of player that Christian Ramirez is. Not only can he find the back of the net, but he can also help as well. I mean, he's got the assist. He's got three shots. And as we take a look at the first half highlights there, that's Ibarra with the first shot of uh, his afternoon right in the hands of the keeper, uh, Ryan Samuels. And then as we go on here, Ibarra again kind of setting that one up, lays it back, and uh, that is put over the net by uh, Bea. That's run right here by uh, Decius. Decius gets around his defender and tries to poke it towards the near post, but corks it a little too far. Perfect opportunity there. Now uh, Ramirez with the header, a nice floater in by Bea there, and Ramirez just puts it over the net. Now Ramirez right here trying to create some space on the touch line. Pokes that towards the middle. Barros tried to put that one on frame. Nice saves by Samuelers. And now here's the goal by Adicius, a shot on by Ramirez, and that's how he got the assist. Adicius cleans it up on the far post, and Barros to Ramirez, and Ramirez, a nice uh, fingertip up. Oh, there we go, there's the goal again by Adicius. As we take a look at some of the first half highlights here, Lewis University soccer, and the defense there by the uh, Lewis Flyers also playing pretty well. They've been doing it on both ends of the field, but uh, we're gonna return to the Lewis soccer field after this. And you're watching Lewis Flyers men's soccer. Well, I think we're an up and coming program, uh, one that's had some success in the past. And the beauty about Division II is the, the balance that they're going to find between academics and athletics. They're going to compete against some of the best teams in the, in the country. I would put the GLVC uh, probably in the top two to three conferences in the country. So on a week-to-week -week basis, you're going to be competing against the best teams, the best players in the, in the country at the Division II level. Join travel maestro Rick Steves for a new adventure in Rick Steves' Romantics Europe. Explore France's Dordogne region with its historic castles and classic cuisine and lively, artistic Barcelona bustling with energy. Discover the delightful secrets of the Czech Republic, the food, the fun, and the beauty. It's travel at its best with Rick Steves' Romantics Europe. Today at 5 on Lakeshore Public Television. Aloha from Hawaii. Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg. Check out what's surfaced in Honolulu. It is a very fine forgery. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. <laughs> oh. The market for, oh. this is why they Russian. Look at <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss our visit to Hawaii next time on Antiques Roadshow. Tuesday at 8 on Lakeshore Public Television. Lewis University, the only Division II school in the Chicagoland area. I'm a Lewis Flyer because of the competition, passion, and tradition. I'm a Lewis Flyer because of the academic and athletic balance. I am a Lewis Flyer because I'm pursuing my dream. This broadcast of Lewis Flyer Athletics is brought to you in part by Advantage Team Sales Group, Chili's, 